Hey everyone, it's Ryan Leonard with Wolf Nest Property Management and today we're going to be talking um, about something I get questions about all the time from DIY landlords and that is how to select or choose between multiple qualified tenants. Um, so let's kind of take a look here. So most owners you know, may not have this issue where you have just a plethora of qualified tenants coming through the door wanting to rent your property, but in the event that it does happen, there's certain things that you need to make sure that you're abiding by to make sure that you're not gonna be subject to a loss, uh, lawsuit or discrimination. Now, the biggest thing is obviously uh, the Fair Housing Act. So if you're doing this yourself, make sure that you've taken the Good Landlord Certification class um, or are aware of um, the Utah Fair Housing Act or or, um, uh, the correct uh, credit reporting act too so these are big things that you want to make sure that you're aware of so we'll kind of dive in here and kind of give you a, I would say that the, the tool belt you need to um, do this effectively so first step and determine uh, who you will rent the property to so most importantly you want to make sure that you have um, a certain criteria that you're going to apply to all prospective tenants. Um, and that's really just being fair and consistent. So if you have a minimum criteria, make sure you highlight that on the marketing. Like if it's a rental um, uh, barrier or rental rate um, or income barrier, okay, you have to, any tenant has to bring in at least three times that monthly rental rate or no credit scores below X will be considered. Um, by having that established, prior to you uh, taking applications is a great way to make sure that you're gonna be abiding by fair Utah Fair Housing. So again, having clear uh, criteria that is gonna be applicable to all tenants and you're gonna be fair and consistent is a great way to alleviate any type of discrimination lawsuit. So uh, first and foremost, set up that criteria. Now, what do you do if you have multiple tenants that uh, exceed that minimum uh, qualification? Again, this is a good problem to have and actually something that we've seen a lot of uh, with the housing market the way that it is. There's such a low inventory in homes to buy that a lot of our tenants are more of that pedigree of a buyer. Um, so we're seeing a lot of qualified applicants come through. So there's really, you know, at least in our um, process procedures, you know, there's two ways to do it. Now, the first one um, is setting up um, or going through the application and selecting the tenant who has the longest proof of payment history or has the highest credit score, or has the you know highest income uh, verification. You know, by selecting the best um, and, and really explaining that to the uh, other tenants that, hey, we selected um, this tenant because they had the longest uh, proof of uh, payment history and biggest or uh, highest credit score. These are good things um, that you want to disclose to make sure that, hey, you know, you're being fair and consistent. Now, one that we like to use um, is actually uh, first come, first serve. So if, if we have multiple applications come in, what we do is the first tenant to submit the security deposit will lock them into first position. Now, what that means is that we're gonna start the screening pro uh, process with the individual who submitted the security deposit. Um, and we're gonna do all of, all of our checks. And as long as they are able to pass that screening criteria that we have set, um, they're gonna be able to move forward with that property. So uh, again, first come, first serve is what we typically like to do. It really helps minimize that vacancy. Um, and we hold them to a standard that they need to pass all these checks in order to be able to uh, lease the property. Now, sometimes this is hard and a lot of owners or DIY owners may drop the ball on this, but if you have multiple applications coming in and you've decided to make the selection, you're moving forward with a certain tenant to sign that lease, you wanna make sure that um, you know, you're gonna disclose that, hey, you know, we've slept an applicant and unfortunately, you know, we will not be running the property to you. Now, if the denial um, is not correlated um, with anything in a protected class, okay, that's a good thing. But if the information, um, the denial was based on, let's say a credit score, you make sure, you have to make sure that you're abiding by the Fair Credit Reporting Act. So again, if you decline a applicant based on, let's say their credit score, okay, you need to go and notify the tenant that this is the reason why uh, you were denied the application. So um, again, definitely something that you want to make sure you're doing when you're a DOI owner. Now, I know a lot of this can be, you know, somewhat overwhelming and things have kind of changed if you haven't rented your property in a long time, um, but we're here to help. Honestly, our leasing team and applications team is so great at not only 
um, you know, moving quickly, but ensuring that we're gonna place great tenants in the property. So if this is just too overwhelming for you and you want to hire a professional management company to handle this for you, we're happy to do it. Uh, we'd love to discuss your property or your portfolio, see if we could be a good fit for your needs. This is all my contact information, my email, my phone. Give me a call or shoot me an email and we can discuss and see if we could be a good fit. Thank you.